Hello, listeners. Jordan here. I just want to let you know that you can listen to Nighttime early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Include it with Prime. You are listening to Keep Canada Weird, a weekly weird news roundup by the Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the weekly Keep Canada Weird discussion series. If you're new here, Keep Canada Weird is the venue in which my pal Handsome Aaron Airport and I seek out and explore the more offbeat Canadian news stories from the past week. In tonight's episode, which we recorded on the evening of May 7th, 2023, Aaron and I find ourselves curating a collection of disturbing discoveries that took place across Canada within the last few days. We're going to talk about a body found in a Quebec forest, a Chinese cat in a box, a perverted Airbnb discovery, and we'll give an update to the story of Diesel, the missing dog. So let's get into it. Handsome Aaron Airport, it is a beautiful day in Halifax, Nova Scotia. How's it down down your way on that damn island? Ah, uh, easy on my island now. <laughs> easy. I'm from there too. I'm not going to bash people. I know, but you've been away long enough that you're teetering on the edge of being an outsider. Ah, yes, you're right. Um, yeah. I'll yeah, be careful so with what I say. Be careful because I've been known to take swings, you know? Mm-hmm. I they call them in the good. business, they call them haymakers. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not going to bash the island. I have no problem with Cape Breton. I have no problem with you. How is the weather on it? What's up? What's new? Uh, the weather's great. Um, it's been it was a sunny day. It was warmer. It was uh, it was good, man. Uh, it was nice because it's been a cold start to this spring, I feel mm-hmm. like. Do you agree? Uh, no, actually, I don't. But I think it's been oh, nicer live on the in mainland, Halifax. Though. I know it's like God's country here in Halifax. It's oh. sun all year round. I've been on the beach since early winter. And it's been fantastic. But I got to tell you something, you know, usually I'll ask you, what'd you do this weekend? And maybe you'll ask me, I'm not going to ask you, I'm just going to tell you, though, something I did that was interesting. I actually and it ties in good with the show. I made a really cool discovery. I bought a metal detector at a used goods store a couple days back with a plan Mm -hmm. of going around my backyard with my kids, metal detecting, and maybe finding some weird old nails or something. Um, So we spent, I guess, Saturday morning, we're going around the backyard, messing around, and I hear every so often, like, beep, 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 and we dig, and we don't find anything. And we were about to give up on metal detecting. And then my oldest son mentioned the fact that there's like a sandbox at like a playground very close, basically across the street from my house. So he's like, let's go over to the sandbox, the sandbox. Maybe someone dropped something there. So we go over and you would swear I had planted this. As soon as we walk on the <laughs> sandbox, I turn on the metal detector and I like swing it like three times. And then I just hear like beep, 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 beep. And I'm like to my kid, I'm like, whoa, like dig there. Something's there. And he does like two quick shovels, like scoop, scoop in this big giant silver dollar. <laughs> like pops out of the sand and wow. he picks it up and it shows on it the year is 1974 and it was like a coin to commemorate Canada's 100th birthday uh I immediately go on eBay and search like is this coin worth anything and sure enough people are selling them between like 30 to 50 dollars needless to say we've been metal detecting since then and have yet been able to replicate our beginner's luck but that was an amazing discovery so when you found it, did you go, oh, a Bobby Dazzler? <laughs> I should have. For people who don't watch The Curse of Oak Island, Aaron's imitating uh, Gary Drayton, which is one of the treasure hunters on Oak Island. That's a real top pocket find. <laughs> it, it, it was that kind of reaction. We freaked out. Um, oh, I bet. Because that's the thing. Even if you find something fairly regular, just finding something is cool when you're metal detecting. Yeah, I also found like this little squished up thing a piece of metal but you could read the text on it enough so i googled the text to try to figure out what this product was and it was actually like a secure like a personal security alarm from back in the 70s it was this little aerosol can called a screamer and if you press like the button on the top i guess like i don't know gas or whatever comes flying out of this can and the thing makes like a super loud siren alarm sort of thing it was like an air called, horn almost like an air horn but like a small one you could have in your pocket we found one of those yeah. and that was kind of cool but mm-hmm. the reason i brought up 
our discovery is not because I wanted to brag about the silver dollar I found and the beginner's luck I had, but because tonight's episode and my weekend, it all kind of ties together in this bizarre way. When coming up with the stories for this week's episode, I had the stories all laid out in front of me. And I'm like, these are the four most fascinating stories I could find from Canada this week. This is what we'll do. And then I'm like, huh, all four of these stories relate to people making shocking and in some cases disturbing discoveries. And then mm -hmm. I send them to you to, you know, for you to do your the deep dive research journalism you do. And then I go out of my house and make my own personal discovery. What the heck yeah. is in the air? Although I don't agree with you forcing that onto the show as if it's one of the stories. That's really what you did. You know, you took something like because these stories are supposed to be focusing on the weird uh, Canadian events that happen to other Canadians other than ourselves. But you said, you know what? I I'm I'm going to make it about me this week. <laughs> like uh, I found a coin. The whole thing. So, <laughs> so everybody all about it. And I'm going to force them to listen to it. And, you know, if anyone wants to congratulate me, you know, you go ahead. Leave a voicemail. I, yeah. 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 <laughs> I know we'll people play it on proud. next week's show so that we continuously talk about this. Um, before we get into this week's stories and the discoveries we'll be discussing, we do have to take a quick jump back to a prior episode we did. Uh, we, we got a listener, uh, Matt, from the United States who wanted to weigh in about, uh, I don't know, this probably a month ago, we talked about the daycare in the in Quebec that is uh, that has a playground that is being overrun by turkeys. Matt has a theory on, or an idea on how Canadians can handle that issue if it hasn't already resolved itself. Listen to this. Mm. This is Matt from Pennsylvania. I'm calling about the animal uprising, specifically the group of turkeys that was harassing a, I believe, preschool or uh, kindergarten. You guys need to take a page out of our book down here in uh, the United States and have Thanksgiving. It's actually our warning to the turkeys. Um, it gives them knowledge that if they do not behave, we will simply eat them. Um, we also pardon a turkey to give an example that if they behave very well, they might just live. What do you think of this idea? Well, do, you, do you think this could change it? Does he know we do Thanksgiving here? He clearly doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but we do, we do it at a different time of the year than 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 in America. So, but it seems like it's not as big of a deal here. Thanksgiving is like kind of like a second rate holiday. It seems to me. I wouldn't say it's. I don't know if I'd put it. I don't know if I call any holiday second rate. But really, I, well, I don't know. I find that kind of that term second rate to be just inappropriate for any holiday okay. it's a all right it's the it's a b-class holiday that uh, too i don't agree with that term but anyway we do thanksgiving i don't know if we do it to the extent that america we do certainly it. don't make the, the the pomp and circumstance that that america does over thanksgiving for sure and is a turkey as closely connected to canadian thanksgiving as it seems to be in america we do have like i have had turkey dinner a lot on thanksgiving but we also will often do like spaghetti dinner on thanksgiving i've never seen spaghetti by anybody else this is the first i'm learning of the spaghetti thanksgiving oh really okay my yeah family, yeah we do it and i love it but my grandmother oh, cooks yeah, the spaghetti best spaghetti amazing. Sauce. Yeah. yeah yeah because you're yeah that's an italian kind of uh you, you get an italian family so mm -hmm. uh and i remember trying your grandmother's meatballs oh my god and you will never forget it yeah they're unbelievable yeah that's true the best meatballs yeah, yeah. so i can see why specifically your family would would have um spaghetti dinner at thanksgiving because any excuse to to eat your grandmother's spaghetti yeah exactly so, uh, yeah yeah but anyway but back to matt here, the, I, guess. I, I guess ultimately matt is saying we need to kill a bunch of these animals so the survivors know what's up yeah yeah i i, I think he's he's uh Skating on some very thin ice with the animals. He's he's uh, poking the bear even a bit here with the turkeys. Uh, he's painting them to be these, you know, subservient um, kind of animals and maybe animals in general where he's like, oh, we keep them in line. Uh, and if they don't watch it, 
you know, we eat them and all of these things. But this is very da dangerous language to be using about the animals who are currently plotting an uprising against us, mm -hmm. um, which is why I always like to speak to the animals and say that I support them. I, I know what they're going to be doing and to please consider me if they are going to keep any of us, any humans around afterwards, I'd like to be one of them. Yeah, I, I guess you're denouncing Matt's comments on this show. Officially, yes. Yeah, I am saying, Matt, your language is dangerous and i respect the turkeys and i don't want them to respect me through fear i want them to respect me because it's mutual and i'd like to live in harmony with the turkey mm -hmm. um so i just want uh matt to be careful yeah well i think it's pretty disgusting what he said if what's happening in canada makes its way to pennsylvania i think he's going to be singing a whole different tune he should be singing a different tune now mm -hmm. If he's been listening to this podcast on mm -hmm. any regular basis, we've been um, sounding the air horn. Um, oh, for what a, a while. callback! <laughs> is it does it count as a callback if it wasn't a joke the first time? I guess it, it is. Does it count as a callback if it happened a minute ago? I yes. don't know. Okay, but well, anyway, I did it. I went for it. Yeah. Well, on behalf of the turkeys uh, invading Canada, screw you, Matt. Yeah, man. Stop eating us. Switch to spaghetti, bud. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, go vegan. <laughs> spaghetti would be, right? Yeah, spaghetti's vegan. Well, Just without no meatballs. The, without the meatballs. What's yeah, the yeah, point? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Anyway, let's get to it. We have a full card. As I mentioned, without any planning and without intentionally happening, tonight's all about disturbing, shocking, unexpected, and in one case, heartwarming discoveries across Canada that all happened last week. We're going to talk about finds. We're going to talk about disturbing finds that happened in an Airbnb in British Columbia, one in the forest in Quebec, one in a box coming to Canada from China. And then we're going to have a, a heartwarming palate cleanser to end this whole thing with. Let's start dark and go to Quebec. You cool with this? Uh, I don't know why that struck me as so funny when you start dark and go to Quebec as if like this entire cloud of darkness just hangs over Quebec all of the time. So if you well, ever want to go dark, you just go to Quebec. Well, if there is a dark cloud that hangs over Quebec, this next story is going to make a lot of sense because <laughs> this is pretty horrifying. Listen to this. Okay. A school field trip in Sherbrooke came to an abrupt end today after the sixth grade students found a body in the woods. Sherbrooke police confirmed to our colleagues at Nuvo that an investigation is underway, but they are not giving any further details. The principal of Notre Dame du Rosaire Elementary School has notified parents of what happened, saying support is available should the children need it. You get a lot of like emails and messages from like the school when you know when anything weird happens like if they're doing like an alarm or any kind of like test or something or someone gets hurt in the school or something weird happens and when i get them i'm like oh my god like what's going on but i've never had anything quite like you know that field trip that i took our kids on like they found a body in the woods mm -hmm. and we all had to come home like that is pretty shocking I'm trying to like, and it, and it was like an elementary school. So this is like, you know, seven and eight year olds in this kind of park with their classmates stumble upon this. There's, I've tried to find more information. There's very little about this. They're keeping it pretty hush hush. So I don't know how close these kids came to the discovery or uh, what exactly they saw or who this person is. But the idea of this having happened is pretty horrific what do you got to say about this oh it's it's gonna it, it reminds me uh, not reminds me but it makes me think of the the movie stand by me okay i know the movie but i can't think of how this relates to that well they go but in this in that circumstance they go looking for a dead body these kids oh they heard there was like a rumor going around town that there was yeah one like one of them knew where it was or something and then they go on this journey and like the biggest part of the movie the biggest story is that they're on this kind of journey together all these things and uh and it's kind of getting to the destination that's the story but yeah then they get there and it's the dead body and it's a whole different ball game when when you're a kid and you're fantasizing about it 
as if it's like, oh, we're going to see a dead body, you know, nuts. like it's going to be crazy. But then the reality is that, oh, my God, like that dead body reminds me that I could die any any day. Mm, that's <laughs> like, yeah. You know, oh, man, these kids like I don't know what age they are, but they're they're young kids. They are certainly have had some heavy conversations with their parents in the days that followed this i i knew someone in school who uh, and when i was in i think i was in high school and they happened upon a discovery like this and i remember mm -hmm. it wasn't like you know like they would not talk about it it was like a, a, a disturbing devastating thing seeing it in the context of a school field trip is pretty brutal i feel for these kids it's a weird story that you know it's notable just because it's so unexpected but at the same time man those kids uh i i just hope they didn't get too close to something that's... yeah how how decayed was the body mm -hmm. and how did, exactly did they find it like to if you i have a feeling if we knew the actual story and the details of what happened we probably wouldn't be comfortable talking about it yeah yeah but it's... i guess that that forces us to make up our own details to fill in the cracks of this oh, story. Oh god, you want to go there? Go for it. Well, I mean, I can I can picture in my mind, you know, a little game of chase is going on. One mm -hmm. of them is running and you know, the kind of the other one's chasing like, them and it's Johnny, innocent. I'm going oh, to get tag your ass, you know. And then all of a sudden, oh, and then one of them trips oh. and like rolls over and into all like, like the laying leaves. on the ground it's like oh man and then all of a sudden there's the face the dead face staring at them like uh, oh my god it would have to be a skull though like in that story you, th that you're describing he like kind of lands on the ground and he's in a bunch of dried leaves and as he kind of tries to get back on his feet he kind of like swipes the leaves and reveals like just like a human skull looking up at him that's how i see that playing out well i see i see the body is so fresh <laughs> oh god like it just disturbing. happened a half hour ago <laughs> oh <laughs> you know? yikes um yeah th there was yeah. it what it reminded me of when i was hearing this story although it doesn't involve children there's that famous youtuber logan paul he had a oh, very yeah, yeah he had a controversial video there's this forest and i think it's in china or maybe japan where it's known as kind of like the suicide capital of the world people go into the specific forest to end their life i um, heard about that place and yeah. he did a youtube video where he went to that forest to just like i don't know walk through it and be there and he's only in there a few minutes when he finds a dead body and he does like the youtuber thing where you know he's reacting to it and it's kind of like off screen behind him and stuff and he got a lot of criticism for doing that of course um mm -hmm. i it just as i was hearing the story i was kind of thinking of that but this is so different because it involves a class of children i'm glad the school board is stepping up and you know notifying the parents arranging to have support if the kids need it because they're going to need depending on their age and you know how much they've lived at this point they're um they're probably going to need to talk to somebody Oh, counseling will be required in this situation. I mean, at any age, when you discover a dead body yeah. accidentally without knowing it's going to be there, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a disturbing thing that's going to sit in your mind for the rest of your life. Okay. I'm not going to take this from disturbing story to disturbing story. So let's go from disturbing to, I guess, weird and unexpected. We're going to move from Sherbrooke, Sherbrooke, Quebec, where the body was found by the school field, the elementary school field trip crew. We're going to go over to British Columbia. And this is involved. This involves a discovery made by border services agents dealing with incoming packages, uh, international packages. Listen to this. Border agents made a surprising discovery recently finding a cat in a box that had been shipped from China. The SPCA says the cat was found after CBSA officers noticed a hole in a package at the International Mail Centre in Richmond. When officers looked inside the box, they saw a pair of eyes that blinked and stared back at them. They say while the cat appeared scared, it was otherwise healthy. The cat, now named Precious Cargo, was taken to a local vet and is now in the care of a foster mom who plans to adopt her once she's fully recover so coming from china to canada a cat in a box i'm assuming there was some food or something in in the box of the cat but my first thought about this is i would have assumed 
oxygen would have been a problem. Like when, when the part of like a plane that boxes and stuff are put in when they're traveling internationally, I, I don't know. I didn't think that would have like, you know, like fresh air and stuff going into it. I'm surprised this cat survived. And whenever in on another t note, anything I've ever ordered from China, like I'll order stuff online sometimes for cheap from China. It takes like in some cases, like three months later, this thing shows up. So who knows how this cat was shipped? But I think this cat's probably pretty lucky. But I want to know, like, did they reach out to who the box, the parcel was addressed to? Because there would have been a shipping address on the on the parcel. Like they would mm -hmm. have been, it would yeah. have been able to be shipped if it didn't. So, like, so yeah, the cat the went to the SPCA, um, not to the know, person it was shipped to. Yeah. When so. Yeah, who is that person and what's being done? Who is it? And was it their cat? Like, did they move here from China, couldn't take their cat at the time, and then wanted it once they relocated here, and then someone shipped it to them? No one in their right mind would do that, though, right? I can't imagine but someone, anyone... someone who's just like, oh, I'll ship you the cat. Oh, does little survive? You know, <laughs> like, there's, there's people dumb enough to do that. Obviously, um, yeah. Like, and, and this probably... If it's happened once, it's probably happened before, but I just, the idea that someone would choose to do this is so shocking to me, but clearly someone made that decision. When border service agents get this package, yeah, looking at who it's going to and asking them like, you know, what's up with this, seeing if there's a return address and finding, like, will they do an investigation? You know, if drugs come in, you know, everyone's going to freak out and they're going to arrest everybody and figure it out. But with a cat, I think they should even maybe even take that more seriously than a box of. I'm surprised it got as far as it did without being discovered much earlier in the mailing process. Mm -hmm. I wonder what led also them... like there's no there's no litter effective litter box situation in that actual box. Like yes. this is a this is a cat that needs to pee and poo and. And, and move around and, and move around it's going to be meowing the entire time i assume like how is it not discovered earlier and when you look at the photo like in that news report we see the video version of it um it's not like a kitten it's like a full-grown like a big cat in a yeah. box yeah so, uh yeah i don't know what to think other than my theory on what's happened is just like you said i think it's someone who wanted their cat and this is how they decided to do it. And I think uh, that person needs a slap in the head. Yeah. So I am curious, like if they, if they did reach out to the person that it was addressed to decided that the cat was better off going to a shelter and getting a new home than going to the person that was supposed to receive that package. Uh, the name precious cargo for this cat appropriate. Yeah, yeah, precious, you know. Um, yeah, this or just call the cat box or stow away. I guess that's not cute, though. Or, like, yeah, yeah, package, maybe. package mittens, package mittens, um, <laughs> mittens, the package. I don't know. So, there was a body found in Quebec by children. Oh, okay, I got it. I got the now. Name. Sorry, oh. not to cut. Okay, I wasn't Pre explaining I for that reason. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just popped into my head. Fred X. Say that again. Fred X. Fred X? It? Yeah, instead of Fed X. But why Fred? Like you said the cat could be Fred. Well, because that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cat's Fred. That's Sorry, impressive. I thought it was funnier. Oh, no, that's that, so. wicked. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so to just to recap what we've done so far, I found a silver dollar. A group of elementary school children in Quebec found a body in the woods on a field trip. The border service agents in British Columbia found a cat in a box, named it Precious Cargo, and it's in the custody of SPCA now. We're going to move now to maybe as disturbing a story as what played out in Quebec. This one, uh, we're sticking in BC. This is going to involve a group of friends who rented an Airbnb in an area called the Sunshine Coast in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And uh, this Airbnb rental goes very wrong. What could go wrong, you ask, at a beautiful Airbnb? Perverts could go wrong. And it seems it's always, like it's always the perverts. It seems like that's what happened. Um, I've stayed, uh, I, I talked about my vacation to Florida not too long ago. I 
I stayed at an Airbnb where it was a group of uh, several families. We had like, you know, an eight bedroom Airbnb. We're all sharing this space. This incident plays out in a very similar circumstance. It's a large group of female friends. I think it may be like, um, like, a, like leading up to a wedding or something. The discovery they make at, the, at an Airbnb makes me never want to stay in one again. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Turning now to a shocking discovery. During a weekend getaway to the Sunshine Coast, a group of friends found hidden cameras inside an Airbnb rental. As CTV's Angela Jung reports, where the cameras were found left the women feeling violated. We just found out we were being watched in our Airbnb. Kennedy Caldwell sharing the details of a scary ordeal. Last month, she and a group of friends went to the Sunshine Coast when one of them made a horrifying discovery. The night we found the cameras like took a bit of a dark turn because we all were very scared. It was like kind of the middle of nowhere. In the two bathrooms, they found what appeared to be camera lenses inside the bottom of the electrical sockets. They were pointed in the direction of the showers. Those are like obviously like intimate private moments that now someone out there has on their computer or on their hard drive or they're sharing it on the internet. That is super violating. Worried about being electrocuted, they didn't take apart the sockets, leaving the job to the Mounties. Caldwell says a few weeks later, police told them they did find cameras. They're sending them for analysis. So we don't know what they're going to find. Like, we don't have the footage for sure, anything like that. But they did find cameras. It's super distressing and upsetting, and no one should have to like go on vacation and feel that they're, you know, Naked images are now somewhere online. Sunshine Coast RCMP confirmed they are actively investigating but couldn't give any details. In a statement, Airbnb says we ban hidden cameras and previously refunded the guests as we investigate this allegation. So the moral of the story is always check your outlets. Caldwell's TikTok video has now been viewed nearly six million times. A lot of people are saying like now um, when they go to hotels and Airbnbs, they're going to be checking outlets um, as well. So I'm really happy we could help spread the word about that. Once police conclude who's responsible, the women plan to launch legal action. Angela Jung, CTV News, Vancouver. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where, like when I first heard of this story, I was like, did they put the cameras in? for a perverted reasons or do they put the cameras in in a for a reason of protecting property kind of thing mm -hmm. like wanting to it, no matter how you slice it no matter what reason they put the cameras in it doesn't matter it's wrong no matter what mm -hmm. you can't do that yeah, so, to, you know, just like Airbnb, clear. like Airbnb says, they ban hidden cameras, mm -hmm. uh, and, and probably for that reason, some people may think like, I'm, you know, I want a camera in this place in case someone, you know, does something crazy. I have proof or whatever. But if yeah. you were, if you were going to do that, the hidden camera wouldn't be put in an outlet an electrical outlet pointed towards the shower in a bathroom. Mm -hmm. no, no one's going to vandalize your bathroom if yeah. if, you, if you want it to do that. You'd be looking at. You know, maybe the front door, people coming in and out, or maybe the living room, but something like a bathroom, a bedroom, you know, that's, you know, that's way, perverse. way, way, way yeah. too far. Yeah. In a bathroom, I think perversion has to be the the motive in this camera for if for if anyone who's listening wasn't able to follow that story well, mm -hmm. you, when you look at an outlet on the wall, there's like the two like kind of when you put in your plug there's like the two that are kind of like up and down which are like the eyes of the face and then there's the kind of circle one which is like the mouth of the face and like all three of them mm. get used and you put something in that camera was a little tiny camera in like the circle part which if you're looking at the wall outlet as a face it would be the the mouth of the face that makes up a wall outlet uh i heard in a different interview with the with the women who stayed there they noticed that that outlet didn't work they plugged something into it when they first arrived and it didn't work and they're just like oh i guess that outlet doesn't work and then in looking at it being like why doesn't it work they thought they noticed like the reflection from glass took a closer look they realized there's a little camera lens peeking out at them they if they had by that time showered and got changed and did all the stuff people do in a bathroom 
they must have been horrified. I'm, I'm assuming yeah. that stuff is either saved on a hard drive in the wall somewhere or was immediately like broadcast and streamed on some like dark web website mm -hmm. where you can watch people shower in this person's Airbnb or something. That's where yeah, my mind goes. It could be any, any, any one of those options and uh, or even worse, I guess. I don't know. What's worse? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they just it, it's like immediately gets emailed to your boss and your yeah mom. like a sabotage kind of like a uh, ransom kind of thing like you know we we filmed you doing this so pay us this much money or else we're releasing the videos like if they film them doing something you know incriminating in any <laughs> in kind of way <laughs> why in the bathroom what incriminating that's where thing? every incriminating thing happens like, or i'd say 90 percent of them happens in the bathroom go in the bathroom start selling drugs you took you took a giant crap in my bathroom, and if you don't give me ten thousand dollars, I'll, I'll send, send proof. it to your boss. Proof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's probably it. No, I think uh, I think that I was thinking the owner of this Airbnb has some explaining to do, but not necessarily because what's to stop someone from renting an Airbnb? installing this camera oh, with a hard yeah, drive in the mall yeah. or uh, with a hard drive in the wall they come back i don't know two months later and take two months worth of videos of people everyone who's rented that airbnb showering and yeah since, yeah and since like you have access once you take off the outlet and stuff and get in behind there you could have a hard drive in there you have access to power so that camera could run 24 hours a day filming random people shower mm -hmm. uh that was where my mind went and i think this um yeah. It's pretty shocking. You know, you, you can go to a gas station or wherever and people will put uh, over the top of like a bank machine. They put like a, a little thing that reads your card as you stick it in. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily the people who work at that business. Just some person who wishes to do people harm. Install that thing that kind of reads your card as you put it in. You could, it, It's kind of the same kind of thing in this or could be the same kind of thing in this Airbnb. You just rent it, install this thing in the wall, come back two months later and rent it again. Take yeah, your hard I mean, drive. if you do do that, though, the only catch is that, like she said, the outlet wasn't working and that's how they discovered it. Mm -hmm. So however they set it up, it was set up like the, the it kind of caused the outlet to not work. However, mm -hmm. they had the camera rigged in there. Yeah, that's so it, it was like a, it was were, probably a dummy outlet, like a fake outlet was what so they if, put in there. Yeah, yeah. So if you were like in a scenario, you said a guest who installed the camera, you know, the, the kind of so a guest eventually is going to say your outlet doesn't work in the living room or in the bathroom. And then they go to fix it and they find your camera. If mm -hmm. you, if it was under, you know, that's kind of the, the thing about, uh, you know, getting caught eventually yeah. if that's, if that but, is what is happening. But if you rent an Airbnb and one of the outlets don't work, how like how likely how many people would need to rent it before someone contacts the owner and it's like the, one of the outlets in the bathroom doesn't work um i i think you could go a long time and even if the owner finds it and you know removes it or whatever happens it's they still can't pin it back to which of the prior people like how long has it been that this has been in there like how would they you get caught mm -hmm. yeah. i think i think in the only way that someone would get caught i think is either look at their list of people who've rented the place and find someone who's rented it twice or something. Maybe that's one way to catch them. Uh, or look at the owner. It's like, well, yeah, it becomes a chicken before the egg. So maybe the owner installed these cameras to catch someone installing cameras. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, man, somebody keeps putting one of my guests who comes frequently keeps putting cameras in, in in the bathroom to film people showering. I don't know who it is, so I'm going to install a camera to see which one is installing cameras. Mm. And whenever someone's showering, I just close my eyes. Oh, yeah, or like... I, you know, I'm there anyway. I might as well watch. <laughs> uh, I feel bad for the children who found the body. I feel bad for the cat who is in the box. And I feel bad for everyone who got a shower at this place because that footage is somewhere i hope when the cops showed up and took this thing out of the wall they found the hard drive with every bit of information on it um mm. 
and no internet connection because anything else is shocking. Uh, and I'm I'm definitely going to be taking a good look at outlets uh, in bathrooms in any rental <laughs> that I go to from this point forward. It's going to make the entire nation of Canada on edge now going mm -hmm. to hotels and going to Airbnbs because you're just like, even if I don't see one, is there one somewhere? Yeah. Or has the hidden camera kind of technology evolved beyond the, you know, outlet thing that, that this uses? Um, yeah, because it is always evolving. So weird. I'm, I'm actually, as we're talking here, oh, this is pretty scary. I was just searching uh, wall outlet hidden camera just to see, mm -hmm. like, you know, where do you buy these things? You can actually buy them on Amazon. <laughs> oh, you can buy everything. It's on wall, Amazon. It, the, the title is wall outlet hidden Wi Fi 1080p secret spy camera. So it, it can connect to Wi Fi and yeah. transmit in real time. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's pretty freaky. I'm not leaving my house again. That's it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's just this this world that we're slowly easing into now, where know, technology but... is advancing at such a rapid pace now that we, I just feel like I have no control. Well, we have no control anymore. It's just yeah. it is what it is. Well, we got cameras and outlets. We have AI doing our writing and music. Just one comment about AI. Over the weekend, I was uh, saw something pop up online that I had to watch, and it was um, somebody has used AI to replicate the voice of you know a bunch of famous singers. There's a bunch of versions mm -hmm. of this, but the one in particular that stood out to me it was a um, someone made an album where it's uh, Freddie Mercury from Queen and Michael Jackson singing various songs and. I listened to some of it because I'm a big fan of both of those artists. Uh, I listened to some of it and it was so incredibly bang on that it was shocking. Mm -hmm. The Freddie Mercury ones, he was doing Beatles tunes and Michael Jackson was doing songs by The Weeknd. He was a Canadian oh, okay. performer. Yeah. And The Weeknd, yeah. when you hear his music, he actually kind of like does like a Michael Jackson kind of style. But when you hear Michael Jackson AI singing The Weeknd songs, it's like you can hardly tell it's not Michael Jackson singing a song that was written, you know, six to ten years after he died. But yeah. yes, the world is nuts and we're getting thrown into it like it or not. We've become those old people who are like, in my day. In my day, you couldn't replicate anything. Yeah. And there weren't cameras and, you know, a hidden camera was like in a briefcase because that's how big cameras were. Um, mm -hmm. I think we need a palate cleanser. Do you? uh i could use one yeah it's been a dark episode it's been bodies there's been cats in boxes there's been dead hidden... bodies filmed bodies uh we have a palate cleanser we have an update to a story we, we didn't break the story but we talked about it last week the yeah. story of diesel the missing dog when we heard last, Diesel's um, the owner went in a store. The truck was outside running with the dog Diesel in it. Somebody stole the truck with the dog in it. At the time we left off with this story, the truck was found. It had been said that it went to Quebec and back into Ontario. Diesel, the dog, was nowhere to be found. We got an update to this story that I'm happy to share. Where about it? Yeah. David Borovoy says it's hard to put into words the feeling he had when he reunited with his dog Diesel earlier today. I'm so excited to have him back. Diesel went missing one week ago from an Iroquois parking lot inside Borovoy's truck when it was stolen. Dog lovers immediately united in a massive search across eastern Ontario. Diesel! Diesel was last seen in the truck at a gas station in Williamsburg and then somehow made his way to Quebec, where he was dropped off at the Valleyfield SPCA, 115 kilometers away. The SPCA said he ate uh, two big, two to three big bowls of dog food and a lot of water and everything. He was taken good care of. I, I'll say that he's not hurt. 
Aside from an allergic reaction on his right hip, Borovoy says the dog hasn't lost weight. And at that shelter meeting Wednesday, Diesel as excited as his owner. His head popped up and he came to me right away. And uh, yeah, it was quite, quite uh, dramatic for me. On the drive back to Iroquois, Diesel living the ultimate dog's life. We stopped at McDonald's and I bought him as many burgers as he would eat and whatever he wanted was fine by me today. Borovoy, appreciative for all the help over the past week with people sharing photos and searching. I am so grateful to all of you and I don't even know what to say to everybody. Now he says there is only one thing left to do. Take him home and give him a bath and, I don't know, cuddle him for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I guess you're going to want to hold on to him and not let him go. McDonald's for Diesel the dog. Love it. Ah, that's a good story to go out on. He's found. I, You know, I had my doubts that that story was going to end well. I agree. Uh, when they found the truck and didn't find the dog with it, I was like, you know what? This doesn't sound like it's going to end well. But then to hear that he was found, like, that's great. Like, there's, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to hear about a lost animal and thinking about if the animal's in danger. Is it okay? You have no idea. But then to find him and know that he's okay. And he was, he was dropped off at an SPCA. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I assume that the person maybe knew the story when they saw the dog. I wonder. Maybe uh, my my boy's just joining me. We're talking about Diesel, the dog being found. So someone steals the truck, takes it from Ontario to Quebec and back. They find the truck. The dog's missing. Turns out the dog was dropped off at an SPCA. I'm assuming by the thief. What, what do you think of this? Well, he's a thief, but I would say he has a good heart. Do you think so, Aaron? Do you think that's appropriate? To do, say? do we think the thief? Uh, dropped them off or it seems as though someone dropped it off at the spca do you uh, think it was yeah i guess that's possible i just kind of assume that he you know got kicked the dog out at some point in time somebody found it and they brought it to the spca oh i never thought about that i was thinking and uh, me and dom have been talking about this i've been thinking that the thief stole the truck and was like oh my god there's a dog in this truck and it's an awesome dog diesel's great he's like a well behaved he's a good like good boy i gotta do something about this and decide to drop it off at the spca but i guess for the thief even if it is a dog loving loving thief that puts them at a personal risk of being caught. absolutely yeah so I, I i don't think it was the thief that did it although that's a nice kind of lens to put on it i think is to mm. imagine that the thief's you know heart grew 20 times that day and, <laughs> and brought the the dog but here's my you know, this is a this is a, a happy ending, sort of. I have a bit of a gripe with the owner again. Uh oh, because uh, for people who are new to the story, Aaron famously and controversially had a gripe with the owner last week because the owner chose to leave his truck running with the dog in it when he went into a grocery store. Yeah, yeah. It What's was, your problem was... this week? He said the owner said he's going to reward the dog by giving the dog a bunch of burgers at McDonald's. Mm. And I'm like, why would you reward your dog with guaranteed diarrhea? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a rough, like the next day is going to be pretty awful for the dog, but yeah, you know, do dogs will eat anything. But I guess if you, if they eat a burger, that's probably fine. But to be like, I'm going to just give my dog all the burgers. I'm going to load wants. them with burgers. <laughs> yeah. Like that's anybody, any functioning animal that eats a bunch of McDonald's burgers in one sitting <laughs> is going to have diarrhea. <laughs> it's, it's one plus one equals diarrhea. <laughs> um, so I don't know. And then I imagine the dog, you know, using the bathroom with having constant diarrhea from the reward McDonald's and then realize somebody's <laughs> filming them <laughs> with the camera in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how this story really ends. Oh man. Uh, for P uh, as we were watching that, that clip there about diesel being found, I looked a bit deeper into the wall outlet things. Uh, I'm terrified now there are multiple versions 
for sale on eBay and Amazon. Not only outlets on the walls, there's like iPhone chargers, you know, like the white brick you plug into the wall and the cord comes from. You can get Mm-hmm. versions of those that have a little camera in them. And this stuff's not expensive at all. And it's Wi-Fi. So it not only does it save it, it transmits it and you can broadcast it, like live stream it to the internet. This world is screwed up. And thankfully, it's not so screwed up that Diesel is able to still return home after his adventure to who knows where, Quebec at least. Mm. yeah yeah what an adventure it probably was Um, yeah, in thinking of it, I, I'm pretty confident that the thief wouldn't have been the one to drop it off at the drop the dog off the DSPCA. He probably let him out at the side of the road. Much like this, you know, we covered this similar story probably six months ago with this happening somewhere else, and the dog was dropped off on the side of the road. That's probably what happened again. Mm hmm. Yeah, Well, probably. I'm just glad they're reunited. It's nice to see Me some. too. I am glad about that. Yeah, I am glad. As a pet owner, I'm very happy how this story turned out, uh, regardless of the uh, bowel issues the animal is about to have. Mm. Yeah, good point. Well, we're going to start wrapping this up, Aaron. I want to call out to the audience, though, before we do. We're looking, Aaron and I, and I'm speaking directly to the listeners now, Aaron and I have been thinking about supplemental content aside from our episodes. We're willing to do more work to keep Canada weird, maybe in the form of like short bonus content kind of extra episodes, or maybe, I don't know, just tackle this mission and this mandate in some other way. If anyone has any thing they'd like to ask us do to help keep Canada weird, um, we're interested in hearing from them. If any listeners want to take part in keeping Canada weird, we've made it clear the best way to do so is contact us by voice memo at nighttimepodcast.com and let us know what's going on in your town or city or province. Let us know what's happening at your local Tim Hortons. Just tell us whatever's on your mind. Anything you want to say, Aaron, before we wrap this up? I just want to say that um, we want the listeners to do our jobs for us almost Mm -hmm. completely, really. Oh, yeah. If we can just play voice memos. Uh, yeah. And really, we're good. then there's very little that we have to do other than say, hey, here's this week's voicemails. And then that's it. Good night. Good morning. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go for that. Let's wrap this Yeah. up, though, Aaron. Anything you, you have going on this week that you want to tell us about, or should we just shut this whole thing down? Let's shut her down. Um, I'm a man with little going on in my life. So, Aaron, until next time. Jordan, until next time. Uh, go cross your fingers next time you take off your clothes in a bathroom of a house you don't own. You know what? That's a risk I'm always going to take proudly. I want to thank you for helping Aaron and I fulfill our mandate to keep Canada weird. But let us call out for even greater support in this mission. If something weird happens in your neck of the woods, make sure you let us know. We'd like to hear about it and respond to it in an upcoming episode. And the best way to let us know about these news tips is via voice messages sent through my website, nighttimepodcast.com. We hope to hear from you. Now, I'm going to start wrapping up this episode, but let me end with thanks. First, a big thanks to Aaron for sharing another evening with me and with you, the listeners of Nighttime. A big shout out to the internet's favorite cult leader, Unicol, who provides this series intro and outro voiceovers. And lastly, but most importantly, a massive thank you to each and every one of you listening, as without your interest and your support, this show would be as pointless as it would be impossible. Now on the topic of support, let me thank the newest subscribers to the Nighttime Podcast Premium Feed. Kay, Paul, and Michelle, thank you for your generous support. And for anyone else who'd like to support the show, but can't do it by way of a premium feed subscription, you can help keep Canada weird by simply sharing this episode on social media and letting your like-minded friends know about the work we're doing. If anyone listening has any story ideas, wants to give feedback on the show, or would like to contribute a voice memo to be aired and responded to in upcoming episodes, make sure you contact us at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. But until then, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, And let me know if you see anything weird. Keep Canada Weird is written, hosted, and produced by the Nighttime Podcast.